Although often hidden from view, symbioses are everywhere. They enable new possibilities to arise, maximising the efficiency, growth and success of both partners. Hi there, my name's Alison Puglio. I'm an ecologist with a particular interest in fungi. In this video, we look at alliances or associations between fungi and other organisms. These are known as symbioses. We look at what they are, how they work, and why they matter. Forming symbioses is not only a clever way of obtaining nutrition, but it expands the range of habitats and conditions in which neither partner could exist on its own. The earliest alliances were probably those between filamentous fungi and photosynthetic algae, known as the lichens. The combined attributes of the lichen partnership enable it to withstand acute temperatures, desiccation, irradiation and extreme fluctuations that are intolerable to most other life. Lichens not only grow on rock and wood, but on a great range of different substrate types, including human-made ones. You might have found an old car in the bush and noticed how every part, the metal, paint, rubber, glass, plastic, and even the upholstery have all been colonized by lichens. Another vital alliance is that between fungi and the roots of plants. We call these mutually beneficial relationships mycorrhizal symbioses. Myco means fungus and rhiza means root. Mycorrhizal partnerships developed early on in terrestrial colonisation, that is over 600 million years ago. These relationships precipitated remarkable changes to life on Earth mobilising the transition from aquatic to terrestrial existence and consequently shaping ecosystems. Mycorrhizal relationships have evolved in different ways. Ectomycorrhizal fungi, ecto meaning external, form a sheath around the plant's roots, growing between, but not actually penetrating, the outer cells of the plant root tip. In these relationships, the fungus effectively expands the absorbable surface area of the plant's root system, facilitating water and selective nutrient uptake. In return, plants provide fungi with a feed of sugars that they produce through photosynthesis. In Australia, fungi form these symbioses with native trees such as eucalyptus, alocasurina or she-oak, and leptospermum, that's tea tree. Eucalypts, for example, form mycorrhizas with dozens of different genera of fungi, such as Rusula, Amanita, Ostropaxillus, Cortinarius, and the puffball genus Pisolethus. These relationships between fungi and plants are especially important in Australia's old, weathered and phosphorus poor soils. What are thought to be the oldest mycorrhizas occurring in over 80% of plants, including many crop species such as canola and other brassicas, are the arbuscular mycorrhizas. Arbuscular fungi form tree-like branching structures inside the cortical cells of the plant's root called arbuscles. Other types of mycorrhizas form between fungi and particular types of plants, such as orchids, simply called orchid mycorrhizas or those in the heath and heather family, which we call ericoid mycorrhizas. Mycorrhizal networks are increasingly recognised as the great orchestrators of plant interactions, mediating their growth and survival. Fungi not only create soils, they recycle nutrients, they provide soil architecture and they filter water and progressive farmers are recognising the vital importance of getting fungi back on their farms. And that's the focus of the next video.